Hello everybody and welcome to 4th Age Guides. This is Ken MRVHS and today we are going to consider some of the more challenging options for the 4th Age Total War Dominion of Men. This is a mod for Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion that is set after the events of the War of the Ring. And in a previous video we looked at the top 5 easiest factions to play or the factions most likely to get you to a successful conclusion to your campaign. But here we're going to look at some of the challenges. Maybe you've played the mod for a while, maybe you're just a glutton for punishment, or maybe you're just up for a challenge. So that's what we're going to discuss today. For our number five position, we have the Kingdom of Adunabar, one of the main players in the mod, certainly a major faction that commands a lot of territory from essentially all of Mordor, parts of Gondor, and a great deal of territory in the north. What's, what makes this faction so difficult is not its units. It has some excellent units from orcish types uh, to various versions of cultic units uh, to even things like trolls uh, all the way to some very high tier Dunedainic style units such as Royal Longbowmen. It has a fantastic roster but it has a very difficult start partly because of its economy and partly because of its position. You'll see that in the north you'll be mostly secure having the spine of the Misty Mountains to protect you here and you'll have some natural borders with these rivers but in the south things are quite a bit different. You're surrounded essentially on all sides by potentially hostile players, chief of which is going to be your major rival the Reunited Kingdom. Of course it is possible to quickly seize the initiative destroy the armies at Minas Anor and then sweep into the west, but the danger there is that you leave yourself open to counterattack from a very strong and potentially aggressive Rohan to the north, and you may find it difficult to defend against them while also holding back, oh, potentially ambitious Southron kingdoms and Easterling chiefdoms as well. The Dunabar is a faction that gets really strong once it gets going, but it's going to be quite a ride to get there. For number four, we have the Principality of Harondor. This is a faction that is sandwiched between the two rivers, Poros to the north and Harnan to the south. That would appear to give it a pretty secure defensive position initially, and it, indeed it is somewhat straightforward to defend this territory because there's only a single crossing at each of those rivers. The mountains to your east and a sea to your west also gives you a false sense of security. And that is false because although you can hold this territory to some extent, you are surrounded by some extremely strong neighbors. To your south, of course, you have the Empire of Harad, commanding territory from the sea all the way inland. And to your north, you have the two giant Dunedainic kingdoms, the Kingdom of Adunabar directly to your north across the river in South Athelion, and the very large and very powerful reunited kingdom over here in Gondor. For you to succeed, you will need to carve out territory from one or more of these realms, and it's not necessarily going to be an easy road. You do, however, have some really strong units as Harondor. Top at the list potentially is these Harondor armsmen, but your bodyguard units are also excellent as well, and you have a pretty decent cavalry roster to help. Uh, these Harondo retainers, as you can see, frighten the nearby enemy, and they're just a very strong unit in terms of their charge and in terms of their defense. Upkeep costs for many of your units can be quite high, though, so if you don't quickly seize the initiative and conquer some territory, probably from Harad early on, it may be difficult to support your armies, and you may find yourself winding down a campaign sooner than you would like. The one saving grace of Harondor's campaign, I would say, is that you have pretty easy access to the power centers of your strong neighbors. If you get into Athelion, for example, you're relatively close to Minas Anor and important cities like Pelargir and Lynn here. You could also launch a naval raid to Dol Amroth or head down the coast to seize land from Umbar. All of these places are really important for your neighbors, and if you can get a quick, decisive blow early on, then that can be a great start to your campaign. For number three, we have the Principality of Far Harad. This is another Haradrian faction, another unfortunate neighbor of the much larger Empire of Harad, who borders you to the north and west of your starting position. What makes Far Harad so challenging is that strategic situation. Initially, you have three settlements here, all strung out in a very long line along the southern border of the map. You don't have any natural terrain features to take advantage of defensively. You just have these pretty wide expanses of desert. Those wide distances between your settlements are going to make reinforcement 
largely impossible. And in the early years, you can be surprise attacked by Harad. You'll notice that this settlement here, closest to Harad's power centers, does not even have walls. Your units as Far Harad are pretty decent. You have great availability of cavalry. You've got some good units uh, for in terms of fear effect, including Southron champions, and perhaps most importantly, your excellent Southron skirmishers with a very low upkeep cost. But with those only initial three settlements, the early economy is going to be a bit of a struggle. And it will take you, again, like with Harondor, some quick strikes in the early game to establish yourself. My recommendation, go for the chief city located right at this blue banner, and you will have essentially severed Harad's armies into two. And from there, if you get lucky, you can continue conquering towards the west. It won't be an easy road, though, because you can't neglect your northern and eastern front. Initially, the territory to this part of the map is rebel-held, but if you wait too long, the chiefdom of Khand will come down into the south and eventually start to cause trouble with your capital. Unlike with Harandor, you are not really close enough to the Umbar region to make a quick knockout blow against the most important territory for your Haradrian rival, so the early game will be where your campaign sinks or swims. If you can quickly turn the tide, it'll be good. If not, you're going to be in some trouble. And for number two, my choice for the second most challenging campaign for the Fourth Age Total War is the Kingdom of Rovanion. Some factions on this list have a hard time because of their unit rosters. Some factions have a hard time because of a bad initial economy. Some factions have a tough time because of their strategic situation, and a few factions, like Ravanian, have a tough time because of all of those problems. You'll see that Ravanian starts with three settlements. They're pretty decent, but they're a little far away from each other to make reinforcement easy. And you'll notice that surrounding them, uh, there's pretty wide open spaces with not a lot of easily defensible borders. The other thing you'll find is that you are surrounded by some potentially very aggressive factions. To your north in particular, the Kingdom of Dale is very likely to come down and cause problems for you. To your northeast, you have Dorwinian, who may not be too aggressive initially, but just beyond them is the larger faction of North Rune. Other Easterlings await in uh, this part of the map for the Chiefdom of Rune, who may quickly sweep into your territory and be an uncomfortable neighbor sooner than you would like. And in the west and south, you'll have the Dunedanic factions, who tend to get up near your starting position pretty quickly. If you have uh, the Kingdom of Adunabar or the Reunited Kingdom bordering you, that can be a problem. Advancing too early into the west will also border you with the Kingdom of Rohan, who can outmatch you in terms of units and production and economy, and so you'll have a very difficult time just maintaining your starting settlements and trying to expand a little bit as Ravanian. And if that strategic situation is not enough, your unit roster is not the best either. You do have some very useful units initially. You've got your Tier 1 Ravanian Spearmen, who can make a Hedgehog formation and can be more useful than you might expect against certain cavalry units. Uh, but your infantry roster beyond that is pretty poor. Rovanian Axemen are about as good as it gets. You will mostly be relying on skirmish units and cavalry, especially the very light Rovanian Scouts, who will take quite a few losses. Uh, using them en masse will see the best results, but you will take some losses among them, and so that'll set you up into kind of a never-ending retraining loop. At eventually third tier, you'll get these very nice Rovanian March Wardens, but this is, uh, you know, as good as your cavalry gets, essentially. So expanding is going to be important because if you expand into territory uh, held by Dale, you'll be able to train Longbowmen, which are superior to your Rovanian Hunters. If you are able to conquer the Dwarven territory here at Nerigzagil, you can also get some strong units there. And in the Brownlands, you'll get a version of this mercenary unit, Ravanian Ranger Mercenaries, that you can actually train out of mid-deeping. This is a very important unit for you to get, but again, taking this too quickly can easily put you into conflict with factions that you can't deal with early on. So the Rovanian campaign is all about those difficult choices. Probably the best move is to knock out Dorwinian early, or at least take Belegant as soon as you can, and then maybe grab Nerigzagil for some, some cash before the dwarves get too strong. Maybe try to move into Rune. You do get some Axemen units, uh, the, some copies of their Tier 2 Axemen with Warcry and better armor than your native troops. So those might be good options. Another route is to just forget everything and go straight for Dale as fast as you can, because if you don't deal with them soon, they're only going to get stronger. This makes Ravanian certainly one of the hardest 
uh, factions in Fourth Age. And for an honorable mention, before we get to our number one most challenging faction, I'm going to put the Elves. The Elves are a bit of an unusual case. They are very strong in the battlefield. They've got fantastic units, even their lightest troops, these woodland units that you can train out of uh, the Greenwood area and Lorien, are very strong in melee as well as at range. And of course, if you add that with the uh, high, higher high elf type units that you can train around Mithlon, such as Mariners, Lindon Guards, and the absolutely solid uh, Naldor Swords, which are only retrainable in Rivendell, then you have a very, very strong roster. So what's so difficult about the Elves? Well, it is a problem of expansion. Your economy initially is okay, it's kind of workable, and the main problem is that as you expand beyond your borders, you'll need to sink a lot of money into just upgrading those settlements. Combine that with low population growth pretty much everywhere, and even in managed territories where you can't get your best Elven units, you'll be limited to lowish tier Elvelin or Elf Friend Manish troops, which are going to be kind of fine, but not the best. The other problem, of course, is strategic. Your lands are far sundered from one another, and the strongest initial gathering of forces, apart from Glorfindel and the, the Naldor over in the Grey Havens area, is the units right around the Elven King's Halls. You may be tempted to take them out of here and move them down along the Anduin to meet up with some of your forces or generals in the southern parts of the map and maybe grab some rebel territories along the way. The problem there is if you completely denude your Elven King's garrisons, you may invite attack from Dale eventually. And so it may be the case that you spread yourself too thin. While you can certainly defend in a siege situation with your Elven troops, especially in those Elven settlements which have a unique battle map, very, uh, very favorable terrain for archery and defensive tactics, it's still going to be difficult to defend against a full stack with just one or two units. And you may find yourself doing that. So all, while the elves are certainly a, a playable campaign, I put them in this kind of honorable mention position simply because they may be unexpectedly difficult. After you win your first couple of battles with them, you'll find that it's going to be harder than you might expect to win and keep territory. And in the number one position, my candidate for most challenging faction in the Fourth Age Total War is the Chieftain of North Rune. I think this faction escapes attention because it's probably just not very popular, so most folks don't bother playing it. But if you do, you'll quickly find that you are easily thrown into a two or three front war. Your units are, are not the best, arguably, and you find yourself beset by all sorts of different problems. Your unit roster is fairly infantry heavy. You start off with some decent units, in particular these great axes of rune, good for uh, fighting armored units with a war cry as well. And you have these very important spearmen of rune, which are a tier 3 unit for you, which is as high as your barracks can go. But apart from that, you'll be mostly using Mountain Warband and these relatively light tier 2 Axemen of Rune. Your cavalry is limited to your bodyguard unit as well as some uh, light mountain raiders. So for the most part, you'll be a melee heavy faction. That means that your men are going to suffer a lot of attrition over the course of various battles and you'll need to retrain them. But that's going to be made difficult by the distances between the settlements and the fact that as infantry, they're not going to have the movement points to be able to get from settlement to settlement very quickly. So you'll have to train a larger army than you think you need in order to keep it in the field for long enough to do its job and then hold any territory you may have conquered. In terms of strategic situations, you have a pretty open eastern border. Initially, this is uh, occupied by just a couple of rebel settlements, but the much larger and more aggressive Chieftain of Rune to your southeast is probably going to push into this territory soon if you don't get there first. And as soon as those rebel territories are gone, if not before, they may come gunning for you. So while you may initially throw all of your units at a place like Belegant, which is indeed a very juicy prize for the early game, you have to leave some forces around your capital here because otherwise it's going to just be vulnerable to attack from Rune. And it's not just Rune you have to worry about. Dale is a very aggressive, very strong faction. They can outproduce you. They've got uh, technically superior units and they can train a lot of them and a lot of them are going to be ranged. And your units, while they have decent armor, decent defense, uh, especially these great axes of rune without a shield are going to die under arrow fire. So you have to choose your battles very carefully. 
To some extent, you are helped by the fact that all of your native units get a combat bonus in the snow, so it's possible for you to choose your battles and uh, maximize the effectiveness. But compounding all of the problems is going to be the fact that your economy is pretty bad. You start off with a 10,000 Mirian treasury, which is decent for the first couple of turns, but it's quickly going to be used up as you need to train lots of units and start building so you can train even more to keep up that momentum. Probably the best early move is going to be a quick attack of Belagant and then a holding operation against Dorwinian and potentially Rovanian while you scramble some troops to defend along the river Karnan and get some troops down into Rune to start taking territory from them. Whatever you do though, North Rune is going to have to fight on multiple fronts pretty much throughout the campaign because again, you are very far from those important power centers of most of your neighbors. Dale's most important settlements are right here. It's going to be a long time before you feel strong enough to send a full stack or more to take those settlements. And similarly, the most important settlement for Rune is Tham, their chief settlement right down here. And again, it'll take you longer than you like to be able to push down through the couple of settlements on your way to that. Once you have taken those places though, you'll have essentially secured your position in the north and will be in a pretty good position to pretty much end the campaign. Anyway, those are my five choices for the most difficult factions in 4th Age Total War, Dominion of Men. Of course, every faction does have its own unique challenges, and if you play them wrong or make some suboptimal choices, you may find yourself in a very difficult position. But let me know what you think. If I left off any faction that you think is particularly challenging, please uh, let me know. And until the next time, thank you for watching.